Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of Game Time Situation. I am Brendan Bittner and this is Matt. Hold on a minute. I'm Marcus Walsh. You're Matt Brubaker. Oh yeah, that's me? right. Thanks for keeping me straight. We have a loaded show today filled with baseball, baseball, and yes, more baseball. But we are also covering the softball team's success, wrapping up the tennis season, and everyone loves a good golf segment. We also are welcoming a new head eagle to the athletic world here at Ashton University. We will let you know who that is as well. And don't forget about football, folks. We have a scheduling update for you, so stay tuned. Sounds like a great show. If I'm not mistaken, we should be getting started soon. Yeah, well, what time is it? It's game time. It's game move, time. Move. team met up with Northwood Wildcats on April the 8th looking to continue their hot streak in the cold months of March and April. The Eagles had won eight of their last ten games and were finally back home at Donges Field. Home is where the heart is, has been said throughout the years, but on this day home was where the home run was for the Eagles. The Eagles struggled all day against Wildcat pitcher Matt Toporski as he surrendered only five hits in the first game but gave up nine runs. Jacob Petkak started the home run streak off with a dinger over the right field fence in the bottom of the first inning to bring the Eagles within two runs. But the big story of the day was the designated hitter, Ben Menard. He came up in the bottom of the seventh inning with a score deadlocked at six. Before the Wildcats could blink, Menard blasted the ball over the fence in walk-off fashion for a three-run homer and a 9-6 Eagle victory. A.J. Meyer pitched his fourth complete game of the season for Ashland as he bumped his record to 6-1 and one on the year with the win. Game two was much of the same, both for the Eagles and the Wildcats got off to solid starts as the teams were tied at five after just three innings of play. That score would change through, though, in the bottom of the fifth as Mr. Clutch came to the plate again. Preceded by two singles from Jeff Foltz and Petkak, Menard stepped up to the plate and delivered better than the UPS main on Thursday mornings. Menard, Menard led or lined the pitch over the left field fence for an 8-5 lead. That lead would stand due to Menard's pitching abilities as he held off the Wildcats for his sixth win of the season. The Eagles moved to 27-8 overall and 12-2 in the GLIAC on the season. The Eagles' next opponent was the Tiffin Dragons. Tiffin came into this series with an 11-21 record on the season, and Ashton looked to bring out the cleaning equipment and sweep them as well. Game 1 started off well as Ashton prevailed 12-10. Both teams hit the ball well as the teams combined for 25 hits and 22 runs on the afternoon. Tyson Rowland, Jeff Foltz, Jacob Petkak, Austin Ritson, and Ryan Avery all had two hits for Ashland as the Eagles looked solid in Game 1. Game 2 was a tester for Ashland as they, pushed, as they were pushed to eight innings by the Dragons. The Eagles clawed their way back from a four-run deficit after one-half inning with solid pitching and hitting. Kevin Dunn pitched one and two-third innings of relief for the Eagles and the W, and the Eagles sweeped past Tiffin 7-6. Tyson Rowland and Josh Kirsten each had two RBIs in the game, and Austin Ritson continued to swing the hot bat with two more hits. Many people work from 9 to 5 and come home happy. The Eagles worked hard on the second leg of their doubleheader with Tiffin on Saturday, April 11th, and won the game 9 to 5. Austin Ritson, who had pitched only five and one third innings in his career, took the mound and pitched well for that matter. He went five innings, only giving up three runs, and more importantly, got the win. He got help from his batter mates as Tyson Rowland pounded out three hits. Avery, Kirsten, Jason Kress, and Matt McAllister each pounded out two. And it was smooth sailing as Ashland cleaned house, sweeping Tiffin. Marcus, the Eagles are rolling through the GLIAC competition. Did they continue their hot streak against Hillsdale? The Ashland University baseball team had some big performances this season. And at the plate, several runs helped the Eagles defeat the Hillsdale Chargers on April 4th and 5th, 17-4, 9-4, and 7-3. Kevin Dunn, Aaron Hilt, and Brian Lonjack all pitched very well for AU, giving them the chance to win all three ball games. AU dialed up long distance as they hit several home runs in the series. 
Defense was, so defense was a solid staple for the Eagles all series long. Ben Menard, Matt McAllister, Evan Melendez, Jeff Fultz, and Jacob Petkak all had big hits for the Eagles in the series. AU went to 32-8 and on the season overall and 17-2 and in the conference after bringing the brooms out, completing a three-game sweep of the Chargers. The long ball has been an occurring theme for AU, but they have also had big hits in the clutch with runners on base. The key to their season so far has been good pitching, hitting, and fielding. Coming up, AU finishes the regular season in the GLIAC action as they play Grand Valley and Finley, as well as Saginaw Valley State, Northwood, and Tiffin. It's time for our first break. We'll take a breather and come back after this quick timeout with more Game Time Situation. When you ask your child what they did in school today, do they tell you what happened here? How about there? Do you ask them questions about who they had lunch with or who they sat next to on the bus? Having a more specific conversation with your child may be the key to bully prevention. Bullying can affect a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Find out how you can help by calling for free information. Make time to listen. Take time to talk about bullying. And now, another fact of Congress. Voting is the easiest way to participate in our democracy. You just go to the voting booth and check off the best person for the job. Now some people are voting Scrooges. They think their vote doesn't matter. But if you take a look at history, it tells a different story. In 1845, one vote made Texas part of the United States. In 1920, one vote gave women the right to vote. And in 2000, the presidency of the United States was won by 537 votes out of almost 6 million cast in the state of Florida. That's closer than a buzzer beater basket. Closer than making the school bus. If you don't vote, you have no say in what happens to our country. And that's another fact of Congress. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, you want? Hey there. A fire bar. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Welcome back to Game Time Situation. The Ashland softball team met up with Tiffin for a doubleheader on Sunday, April the 5th. Emmalyn uh, Canaram was superb to say the least in game one. She pitched a complete game shutout, allowed one hit, only walked two, and struck out, wait for it, 15. The Eagle offense provided just enough for Canaram as the Eagles scored four runs in the game, all in the fifth inning, and the surprising fact is every run was unearned. Hey, the Eagles aren't complaining and neither am I. Game two is no different for the Eagles, just more runs on the scoreboard. The Eagles kept firing against the Dragons as Tiffin couldn't contain the Eagle offense and couldn't field the ball at all. Tiffin did score five times, but the five errors was the deal breaker as the Eagles won the contest by a tally of 10 to five. Canaram won this game as well as she made a relief appearance pitching two and one third innings and striking out seven. I'm thinking I would strike out against her. The Eagles moved to 29 overall and eight and two in the GLIAC. Marcus, how did the women fare against those Warriors from Wayne State? On April, 10th and on April 10th, the Ashland University softball team took on Wayne State, winning 1-0 and 5-4. AU went to 22-8 overall and 10-2 and 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 in the conference. Emmalyn Canaram pitched seven innings, giving up just two hits. She also struck out five and is now 10-3 on the season after that performance. Carrie Hosier scored the winning run for AU in Game 1. A rally was in order to take Game 2. Logan Hersey went to the or went to 8 and 4 on the season with a victory in Game 2. She struck out two and gave up four runs in seven innings of work. Elisa Kelly and Erica Miller had big hits to give AU the win. The women have played well all season and still have some work to do in the conference. With games against Grand Valley, Ferris State on Senior Day, Northwood and Lake Superior State. 
AU had some tough luck in their doubleheader with Saginaw Valley State University dropping the first game 2-1 while picking up the second game 6-5 on April 11th. Jade Fulton pitched a complete game, giving up one run on three hits. In the game, Logan Hersey hit her sixth home run of the year. Emily Canaram went, or Emmeline Canaram went six innings, giving up two runs on five hits and striking out eight. Nicole Fick hit a long ball in the victory in the game in game two. AU led five nothing, and that went out the door after Shannon Gray hit a grand slam. She and Logan Hersey have six long balls and 19 runs driven in at that point in the season, which is the team's high. In the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings, the Cards scored one run, three runs, and another run, respectively. Hersey went five innings, giving up four runs, one earned on five hits, without walking anyone or striking anyone out. It's time for another timeout. We'll be back with more Game Time Situation in just two short minutes. Our children want to know everything about the world around them. And yet sometimes what they discover makes them feel vulnerable and insecure. In times like these, they need the comfort of an adult, the honesty of parents, and playtime to help them deal with their feelings and fears. Time that will literally heal their hearts. The gift of imagination allows children to see a better world. Playtime allows them a chance to practice creating it. Don't underestimate the power of play. Welcome back to your source for Eagle Sports Game Time Situation. The Eagle tennis team has already completed their season, but who would we be if we didn't tell you how they finished? So here it is. The Eagles beat Baldwin Wallace on Friday, March 27th, 7-2 to improve their win streak to five matches and improve their overall record to 21-6. Ashland took advantage in the doubles matches, sweeping all three. The killer combo of freshmen Victoria Gowdy and Paige Cooper won in first doubles 8-3. On the season, the duo, ha the duo has, re has a record of 20-7. and seven. In second doubles, sophomores Corrine Paisley and Alexandra Ware won 8-2. In third doubles, freshmen Sarah Tegner and junior Krista Halicki won 8-2 as well. In singles play, the Eagles took four out of six as Gowdy, Cooper, Tegner, and Halicki all were winners. Marcus, give those loyal viewers more information on the tennis team's season finale. Quick feet, quick feet stamina, speed, and power. These are some physical components involved in tennis, which is a grueling sport that can be played for hours at a time. AU's tennis team was full of strength and grit as they beat Ohio Dominican 8-1 on April Fool's Day. <laughs> but this was no joke. Freshman Victoria Gowdy, Paige Cooper, and Sarah Tegner won singles. Also sophomores Corinne Paisley and uh, Alexandra, Alexandra Ware won singles as well. As junior Christ, Christia... Halicki Gow uh, as junior as junior Christia Halicki Gowdy and Cooper won doubles eight to two. Paisley and and Alexandra Ware won eight to two. This gave AU their second straight postseason berth. 
They finished 22 and 6 and a 7 and 2 record in the GLIAC. Matt, how have those golfers been doing? The Ashland men's golf team was the host of the Ashland University Invitational on March 27th through the 29th. The team finished third out of nine teams at the tournament, which was held at the Country Club of Ashland. The Eagles went into the final day of play in second place, but couldn't maintain its grip on that spot as Wayne State slipped past the Eagles. Ferris State shot 879 and won the team title. Wayne State shot 883 and Ashland finished at 887. Wayne State Steve Kazorp was the medalist shooting a 213. The Eagles' best scores were turned in by Jay Overy and Joe DeAndre, who both shot 223 and finished tied for sixth. AU's Chris Bacon shot a 225 and finished in a tie for 11th, while Danny Evans shot a 226 and finished tied for 13th. The Eagle golf team's next event was down in the Bluegrass State, but my sources say that the tournament was played on green grass, just to clear up any misunderstanding there. The team put together a 7th place finish at the NCAA regional event with a team score of plus 7. Ferris State finished the two-day event at minus 11 to win the event and the team, I'm getting sick of saying, Grand Valley State shared second place with Indianapolis at minus 9. Senior Joe DeAndre paced the Eagles by finishing in a tie for 5th place with an impressive 4 under par 140. Look out Tiger. Back to Marcus with more golf action. For a perfect result in golf, a man has to have perfect form physically with not just his arms and legs, but with the core muscles and back to follow through on the swing. With these components, a drive might go a couple hundred yards. The mental part of the game is a whole different animal. Well, AU swung for the greens and placed fourth on April 10th and 11th at the Northwood Invitational. Leading the way for AU was Chris Bacon in a tie for 9th at 150. Joe DeAndrea tied for 11th, shooting 151. Overall, AU finished 4th at 610. Ashland finished behind Ferris State, Wayne State, and Grand Valley State. We're closing in on the end of the show. We will take one final break and then bring you more of Game Time Situation when we return. As parents, we do whatever is necessary to ensure the health of our children. Sadly, most parents don't realize that their child's first eye exam with an eye doctor should be between the age of 6 and 12 months. I urge you to take your baby to an optometrist for a comprehensive eye assessment. It can literally change your child's vision of the future. Infancy optometrists offer a no-charge eye assessment for infants 12 months old or younger. Call today to find an optometrist near you. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Takes a lot to know what is love. All right, don't hold back now. Give me all you got. Oh. And there is never a day Maybe baseball is your game. I okay, pal. Put it in right here. You were always there for me. How about golf? Okay, um, uh, choke me down a little bit. Guiding me Straight. Always to succeed. Wanna <laughs> thank you for that. Appreciation. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back to Game Time Situation. The Eagle women's golf team soared, get it? Eagles soared, anyway. Appeared at the Vulcan Invitational hosted by California PA on April 5th and 6th. The team plays 6th out of 12 teams, losing to none other than Grand Valley again. Do they ever lose? The Lakers shot a 635 with California and Pfeiffer a stroke behind at 656. Ashland finished the tournament with a respectable 678. Ashland's top finisher was freshman Aaron Mashif, 
who shot a 166 and her teammate sophomore Annie Miles tied for 16th with a 167. Ashton was ranked 8th in the region at the time. The top 9 teams at the end of the season will advance to the NCAA playoffs. Marcus, how did the women do at Northwood? Consistency is the name of the game in golf, along with mental toughness, of course. You can ask anyone who plays golf. If you can't forget about the last shot, how are you supposed to continue to the next hole? Those are the keys to the game in golf. AU's women's golf team has been strong all year physically and mentally as they continue their strong season by picking up third place in the Northwood Invitational. Grand Valley leads the conference shooting 612. Ferris State shot 625 for second, and in third, AU shot 650. Aaron Mischief tied for sixth place shooting 154. Annie Miles shot 159, placed eight, and placed eighth. Matt, back to you. I hear you have some basketball notes for us. One month after Roger Lyons stepped down from his nest as Ashland University's men's basketball program, the program hired a new head eagle. John Ellenwood was introduced as the new head coach at a press conference on April 2nd in front of faculty, fans, students, and players. Athletic Director Bill Goldring stated, John Ellenwood is exactly what we were looking for to lead our men's basketball program at Ashland University. He's a bright, young, energetic coach who has proven to be a winner on and off the court. He's the perfect fit for our institu institution and athletic program, end quote. Ellenwood has the job turning around a program that lost 11 of its last 14 games in 2008-2009 and recruiting players who can replace the likes of senior guard Brett Wackerly and senior forward Tyler Rosenberger. Ellenwood comes to Ashland from Thomas More College in Crestview Hills, Kentucky, where he was head coach for three seasons. His first year, he took over a team that had only won two games the year before. In his first season, the Saints were 3-23. and the following season, Thomas Moore improved to 11-16 and, and for the first time in school history reached the semifinals of the President's Athletic Conference Tournament. Thomas Moore went 19-9 last season and for the first time in school history won the regular season and conference tournament championships. Ellenwood is known as a great recruiter and is very low-key man that gets the job done. Ellenwood played his college ball at the nearby College of Worcester where he was an All-American in the year 2000. So congratulations and good luck to our newest eagle, John Ellenwood. Marcus, take it away. It's football time, I hear. That's right. AU played the Bloomsburg Huskies to open last season. They lost a classic 49-42. That game might have prompt the two prompted the two teams to open up this upcoming season together. On Thursday, August 27th at 6 p.m., the Eagles will travel to Bloomsburg to battle the Huskies. It'll be game one of a two-game road trip to start the upcoming gridiron season. In the second game of the season, AU will tangle with Ferris State on the road. Then they will come back home to duel with Michigan Tech. Other big games include Hillsdale, who is coming to Ashland on football, football Alumni Day, September 26th at 1 p.m. Northwood comes to town at 1 p.m. on Homecoming Day, which is October the 10th. And on Family Weekend, October 24th, Grand Valley State University invades AU at 1 p.m. All right, Cleveland fans, it's that time of year. It's the NBA playoffs, and your Cavaliers are the number one seed in not only the Eastern Conference, but in the whole league, the NBA. The Cavaliers looking solid so far. They did lose last night. Marcus, your predictions on the playoffs. Well, I think the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to just obliterate the Detroit Pistons. I said this on my show today. I don't think Detroit's going to win a game. I think they're going to get shut out. The Cavaliers will move on through round two. I think they will take on the uh, Boston Celtics possibly, but watch out for the Orlando Magic. Ultimately, I see the Cavaliers meeting up with the Lakers. I think the Lakers will run away. It'll be the Cavaliers and Lakers in the finals. You can book this one to the Cavaliers. I think they'll win it in seven games. It's going to be a tremendous series. I said this before, and I think I'll have to say it again. The Cavaliers, I said on a couple of radio shows before, they have to get home court advantage throughout this playoffs if they want to have Absolutely. a chance, and they did that. So I'm taking the Cavaliers as well, just based on the fact that I'm not going to lie to you. The Cavaliers, I think they will struggle with Detroit because Detroit and Cleveland, I think Ohio State and Michigan, it's that Michigan-Ohio rivalry. I think it'll be tough, but Cleveland gets passed. I think they meet the Lakers as well. But uh, like you said, it could go down to Game 7. It could come down to Kobe and LeBron, who has the ball in their hands last, to maybe decide who wins the championship. Well, that wraps up another version of Game Time Situation. I think this show went well, Matt. I'm starting to feel 
or I'm starting to like the feel of this chair. And I'm liking this producer role as well. Just a reminder that Game Time Situation returns next week for the last show of the semester. Brendan will join us, or join me, as we say so long to the 2008-2009 season of Game Time, as well as Brendan saying so long to this TV2 studio. Time flies when you're having fun. We hope to see everyone back here next week. For now, have a good night. Have a good night, everybody.